Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Got to see, I'm always delighted to be joined by my brother over in Ireland, uh, Gary Cully, the diva. Look at the chain, man. I love the chain as well, Gary. Look. Love it, man. Love it's it. Represent. Say, we've, done, we've done it off camera, but we've got to give the Box Smart a shout Quick out. Shout out to Elliot Box Smart as well. These are fresh out, aren't they? The summer gear. Exactly, man. I don't know. I don't know how to change my view. Let me see. Let me see. There you go. Look, I don't know if you can see there that. You go. There we yeah. go. That's better. Yeah, uh, aye, man. Box Smart kitting us out all the best of gear. So get on at them. A little the shame. Best of, there. The best of the best. The best of the best. Uh, Gary, the reason I wanted to get you on, mate, is uh, obviously I've seen your QA on Instagram at the weekend there. And, and there was a lot of people asking when you're next out. And Eddie Hearn saying that winner stays on. We all know that you won against Vasquez and style stopping yeah. him in the fifth or sixth round I believe I can't quite remember so you must be itching for a date right now yeah man like oh yeah obviously fought back in March um, took a couple of weeks off but I want the aim at the start of this year was last year on the sidelines um, I got injured in after my fight in June last year so the second six months of the year I didn't get to fight so the aim going into this year was fight in March and just keep keep on the Keep on the train and keep keep moving forward. Um, fought in March. Then wanted to get out in June, July, um, and then again maybe twice more. I wanted the aim was probably to fight four times this year to get as active as possible. So, yeah, that just that was just I seen that on Saturday morning. Obviously, I was watching the press conference for Boatzi and Richards, and uh, Eddie mentioned it was winner stays on, and uh, obviously I put up. I don't remember losing, but. Uh, that seems to be the thing in match room. It's it's whoever comes on to a show and fights somebody else who's maybe not not the zone promoted or not Eddie promoted. The winner usually does stay on and get another fight on there. So I'm looking to fight again soon. Um, I'm looking for a show to get out on. So I don't see why why I think I put in a good performance. I think I entertained the last time against Vasquez, and uh, I don't see why Eddie wouldn't have me on. Obviously, there was talk about the failure as well, um, but. August, is that too far away for you? You want one fight before. If you do get the opportunity to fight on the Fela and Mick Collins card, I'm pretty sure that you want a fight before that. You, you're not going to wait. You don't want to wait till August, do you? Like, do you know what? Not Ideally, I wouldn't have wanted to wait till August, but I've never fought on the Fela and I've been there three times or twice or three times and seeing the show that they put on up there and that Mick puts on up there, it's unbelievable. Like, you know, I haven't fought in Belfast since the Joe Fitzpatrick fight back in 2020 when I won oh, the Irish yeah. title. So after that, COVID came along and um, I was on the road for a while doing doing the behind closed door shows, obviously. And then we got the, the show on, on Matchroom and Nottingham back in March. So I haven't fought in Ireland in, a, in what, two years now. I'd love to come back. Um, it's only eight weeks away, nine weeks away. So... The, probably the only one I would turn down a, a, a show in a, a fight in June, July for would be would be to wait for the failure because um I haven't fought in the failure yet and I'd love to be a part of it. So yeah, probably if I if I got an offer to fight in the failure, I would I would love to do that instead. But again, then take take a take a fight in the in in the failures early August so I could get out then potentially October and then again December. So I can still get four fights in this year if I go in the failure, you know. The failure is, is an, an unbelievable for, for an Irish fighter as well. I mean, that outdoor venue, um, obviously mixed ring walk, man. It's an unbelievable ring walk, and it's probably every Irish fighter's dream nowadays. From what Mick and Jamie and Colin Boxing have done with that failure, they've, they've built it up now for this huge festival in Belfast. So, is it almost like a, a a dream for every young Irish fighter coming through to get on that card one way or another? another? Yeah, like maybe so. I think so. But uh, I, like I would have said, maybe a year or so ago, when when it would have been probably a little bit earlier down the card, it would have been maybe two, three and oh, four and oh, five and oh. Um, if uh, then at that stage your career is just about activity. So obviously the the shows, the big shows are great to get on, but it's just about staying as active as possible. So like I could fight it out in my backyard back then, and I wouldn't care. But um, now at the stage I'm at now, I think like the bigger shows, the bigger platforms. I think if I fought at the failure this year, I could potentially get a big fight and um, get quite high up the card as well. So, obviously, it would be it would be a dream come true to be back in front of the Irish fans in a big fight like it would be massive. So yeah. The thing is, well, you coming off the Miguel Vasquez win, an ex world champion, albeit maybe some people say he was old, he was short, but 
I mean, he was still durable enough to go the last the distance with you, Gary, and you proved that only you, Josh Taylor, and one other fighter has done against Vasquez, and that's stop him. And you stopped him in, in fantastic fashion. So looking at a show, possibly the failure, you're needing an opponent who's up another level still. You can't go be you can't be going back down and fighting some no disrespect to them, journeymen and stuff like that, but you need to be up there and fighting somebody who's at, at that world level or a former world champion. 100%. Let's not forget, Vasquez was a, Vasquez was a world beater when he came mm-hmm. over back in, back in what, 2021 and beat Ritten. And, and, and Davis, to, you can, you know, the and Davis and O'Hara Davis. And O'Hara actually admitted that he thought he lost that fight as well. Mm-hmm. And then uh, came over and beat Ritten and didn't get the decision. And everybody was raving about how good he was then and, and, as as soon as I go and did what I did to him, he could have done that against me, but I just didn't let him do that. I brought my game plan and I did what I had to do, and I got him out of there. But yeah, it's it's just funny that the, all, all the especially the I seen the zone punditry after the fight and stuff, and oh yeah, he was shot and he shouldn't fight again. But the year before, he was the best thing ever when he was fighting Richard, who it suited their narrative then when he was being Richard was being promoted by Eddie and and promoted in the zone, and it, they had the big. Big Vasquez up then for the performance you put in, and then I come over who's not signed and put in a performance like that, and all of a sudden he's shot and he shouldn't fight again. It's just funny, but yeah, I've I've always said, Andy, I want to keep continue to step step up the levels, and uh, I want to continue to do so. But probably now I'm I'm getting to a stage now where I'm 14 and oh, and I've just knocked out a guy who's former world champion, and people, I'm I'm not I'm I'm ranked four or five at the W. WBA and, and I think eight with the WBO, so I'm probably not far off getting a a, a, a shot at a world title. But the, the predicament I mean, there was I'm 14 and 0. Um, like the champions here at Devin Haney, I think he's what 26, 27 and 0. George mm-hmm. Cambosis is 21, 22 and 0, something like that. So I have a lot of experience to catch up on. Um, by the time I get up there and, and um, it's probably only going to be two, three fights time. So, like I said, I want to keep stepping it up. I want to keep challenging myself and um, I want to keep seeing, testing the wires and seeing where I'm at and keep putting them in, in big performances against big names. So, yeah. I'm going to have to say it, mate, because being that I'm a, a biased jock and I, I, Ricky Burns, right? I know this talk about that, but yeah, yeah. the three-weight world champion, he's coming off a good win. He, he, he said to me that you'd only take big fights against good opponents on big shows. And, like, I, I, could, you, could you see that fight materialising you against somebody like Ricky Burns? I mean, for me, selfishly, it's a fight I wouldn't mind seeing because I, I love Ricky and I, clearly, and I love you as well. And it's, it could be that, that fight that Ricky needs to beat a young prospect like you and then you need beating somebody like Ricky Burns, who's a three-weight world champion, been there, done it, only lost against great fighters and Terence Crawford and all that. So, selfishly... I'm going to ask, is that a fight you can see? Is that a fight that you can maybe talk about in the future? A hundred percent, potentially. Like it, it seems to make sense. Um, if I, if I look at it from a from a neutral point of view, Ricky's obviously getting on a bit, but he's 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 like you said, three weight world champion. He's been there and he's done it. And then you've got a prospect coming up who's fourteen and oh just knocked out a former world champion and is looking to step up again and Ricky seems like the sort of if it's not Ricky it has to be somebody along those lines like you know mm-hmm. I think the Ricky Ricky Burns fight possibly going to happen I, I'm not sure but something along those lines definitely makes sense Um. so yeah I would be I, I'm definitely open to a, to a fight like that in the future for sure Um. I think it's the type of fight I need to to build experience. Like you said, he's been there, he's done it. He's um, he's like a like a Vasquez type opponent, but probably probably a little bit better and a little bit more experienced than him. So um, yeah, for sure, Ricky Burns and uh, all, all of them big names. Ricky Ricky Burns is a massive name across Ireland, the UK, Scotland as well. So I want to be involved in big fights with big names. And Ricky Burns is a legend in Scotland, a legend in the UK. So yeah, for sure, definitely. There's always that Maxi Hughes. I mean, I do, I do, I, I remember that you two were, were due to fight before COVID hit. Um, again, a fight that maybe Maxi's thinking he wants to push on now up there. You don't offer him much just now, being that he he's, he looks like he wants the Ryan Garcia fight. He wants these big names, the big money. But again, you're you're needing these type of guys for your next fight, aren't you? Yeah, for sure. Like, 
I'm in a position where I'm I need these type of guys, but probably they don't need me right now. Mm. Um, like Maxi just came off a big win, and like you said, he's looking for like the types of Ryan Garcia and Eddie has said he wants to make him big money and get him involved in big fights, and they're talking about the the arena and Leeds to sell out the arena and Leeds and bring Ryan Garcia over. So, like to selfishly, yeah, I want the, the Maxi fight, but like if I was in Maxi's shoes and and I'm being told that there's an offer out to Ryan Garcia to fill your hometown stadium. Mm. Big money, massive fight, or else step back and there's this guy here who's just knocked out three of his last four, 14, you know, six foot two, Sopa, lightweight. Like, no thanks, you know what I mean? So I, yeah, I think yeah. he would, I, th I think business-wise, and if I managed Maxi and I was part of Maxi's team, I'd probably be saying to stay away from that one. And, and rightfully so, you know, because if he, if he can make bigger money and be involved in a bigger fight, rather than, than fight me, then he's probably right to do that for his own career. He has to be selfish. He's probably, I think Maxie's maybe, what, 31, 32 now. He's not, he's no spring chicken. He's not got five, ten years left in the sport, you know. So he's got to think about making the most money and being involved in the biggest fights. But definitely, again, it's a big name in the UK. Um, he's pushing on in the world rankings as well. So it's another, it's another big name and another fight, of course, that I'd be open to taking as well. But, like, maybe maybe not now. I'm calling for it now, but give me one, one more fight, two more fights, and I can be in that position as well where I offer Maxi as much as he offers me at the moment. So, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, defi it's definitely a possibility for the future as well, both of them names. And both of them names have been talked about, and I'm definitely open to both of them names. Uh, definitely. Again, like I said to you, it's, right now they're probably the, the fights that you need, but you did mention David Haney and Cambosa, so they're fighting next weekend. Being that is your division... And you're talking about being a world champion. So, your thoughts on that fight? I mean, Devin Haney's going to be there without his coaching team. I think he's there with Sab Judah's dad um, because, obviously, issues with his dad, Bill Haney, and obviously, uh, they, he can't get in right now. So, he's going to be without his training team. And just talk to me about how much that affects a fighter being away from home, especially as far away as Australia. Without Imagine, imagine you fighting in Australia without Pete Taylor, man. Just talk to me about the mindset of a fighter and give me your thoughts on that fight itself. Yeah, for sure. I think... It's it it all plays down to how Devin is gonna handle that because uh, like two three four weeks ago I had him a heavy heavy favor I I couldn't see I can't see Cambosis beating him and I probably still can't but his dad is his dad his trainer his best friend he seems to be by his side like all of the time and for him to not get in to to Australia for the biggest fight of his life is massive obviously. I, I only had a fight back in the start of lockdown um, when I fought Woodruff. And my coach, Pete, Pete could come, and only one coach could come, and my coach from Nice, Niall, that you've met Niall Barra from, uh, from Unit 3. He's been with me since I'm 13, 14 years old, and he couldn't travel over to that one because it was in the bubble, and that affected me big time. So I can see where how it can be an effect, but... A fight of this magnitude, I think you just have to leave emotion at home, and it's just business when you get there. And I think skills pay the bills as well, and I don't see, I don't see um, Cambos having enough skills to beat Devin Haney. Interesting, definitely interesting. It's a, it's a fight that I'll be watching definitely because it's a the lightweight division and, and the the featherweight divisions are, are hot right now, and it's, it's boxing's on the up. But again. Before I let you go, yeah, because I know you, Gary, you're probably you're training in half an hour. Man. It's like a day. There's a you don't take days off. Let's be honest, you don't take a day off training. Look, you're right outside. You know the where gym. I, you know right where outside, I am. Right outside the gym. See, I knew you'd be yeah. there or thereabouts, man. Yeah, always, man, always. Yeah, listen, and that's that's the way to be. It's the right mindset. It's only a short career. So finally, then, you did say Eddie. I can't remember losing. So have you got a message for Eddie Hearn about getting back out and hopefully getting on one of them big shows again? Of course, that's that's what I want. I want to be involved in the biggest fights, the biggest nights, and and the biggest shows. And Eddie seems to be doing that at the moment. He seems to be uh to be leading the way, putting on the big shows, putting on the big nights. So, of course, I want to be involved in them big nights. Um, like you said, he he said it was winner stays on. I don't remember losing. I think I came on and probably stole the show that night. Probably put in the biggest performance of the night it was the name on everybody's lips. Like I said, it would be when everybody was leaving the arena, and since then have not heard a thing you know so I think it's funny every time I've stepped up I've stepped up and won the Irish title and I stepped up won the WBO European and stepped up and stepped up and kept stepping up stepped up for Vasquez and keep putting in big performances I'm like right yeah 
now now is the time that they're gonna come. Now is the time they're coming mm. gonna come. And I'm still I'm still sitting here in the same position, putting out tweets and putting out Instagram stories, looking to get on these big shows. I think it's crazy that that somebody hasn't snapped me up yet. But look, that time will come and uh yeah, if it's winter stays on, let's go again. I'm ready to go in two weeks. So whenever you've got a whenever you've got a start, just give me a show. I'm ready to rock, yeah. Like, like I said to you, man, you stay in the gym anyway, Gary. It's not like you need to get ready because you're, you're staying ready, man, every single day. So I think you maybe take Christmas and your birthday off, man. I think that's the only time you take days off the gym. Yeah, I, I usually try, I usually go for a run Christmas day, to be honest with you, just to keep busy. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Listen, Gary, listen, you deserve it, mate. So hopefully that, that big, if it's the failure or a phone call from Eddie Hearn to, to fight a, a big fight back in the UK, then listen, you deserve it, mate. You keep doing what you're doing and uh, no doubt I'll catch up with you soon, brother. 100% Andy appreciate your time as always and uh, yeah hopefully it's not too long before I'm out on another big show and putting on a big performance again definitely mate listen Gary enjoy your training session mate and like I said hopefully I'll catch up with you soon cheers pal chat Good to you in a bit thank yeah. you welcome Team Everlast to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.